Hello, this is Linda Vetris Nichols, and do I have an amazing woman with me, Jennifer B. Welcome, Jennifer. Hi, Linda. I'm happy to share conversation with you today. Yay! Genuine <laughs> conversations. <laughs> Genuine <laughs> conversations. <laughs> Such a cool, such a cool logo. All right. So yeah, we're talking about be authentic. Now, mm. Jennifer, you're like one of the most amazing, authentic people I know. <laughs> I learned so much from you, from you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so to be authentic, we get to lead from our heart, right? So mm -hmm. looking at authenticity, then lead from your heart. So how have you found that you've done that in your life or shifted into doing that in your life? How do you explain that? Oh, I definitely shifted into being authentic. Okay. I, through my journey, I found that I had to let go of the people pleasing in order to be liked and accepted and take a risk, hmm. come outside of my comfort zone and stand on that ledge and say what I need to say. And after doing that, I mean, I did that the first time. I did that the first time on LinkedIn, actually. Wow. I was really wanting to share my message. I was feeling this pull to, um, I'm watching others share their message, and I want to be part of that. Right. And even though I didn't feel ready, and even though all my ducks weren't in a row, I just knew that what was on the other side was worth it. I just cool. knew that. I went to the other side, I would not be disappointed. Or dead. <laughs> and yet, but my reluctancy kept me held back for a very long time. Sure. Right? Those limiting beliefs were stacking up inside yeah. of me. And as I started to shatter those limiting beliefs, that's when I started to step into my authenticity. I started to recognize that I had a voice and that mm -hmm. I had value and that I could contribute as well. And yet I still needed to do more work. Mm. It, take, it took me a lot of practice to mm -hmm. believe in myself. Okay. And as a matter of fact, it took a lot of belief from others in me. Yeah. Till I started to believe in myself and believe that my words and my voice were just as important as someone else's. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a history of letting others be successful. Right. I had a history of letting others take credit. Okay. Of not validating myself, of mm -hmm. shrinking, of mm -hmm. playing small. For the fear of being rejected. Yeah. And exactly. so as I did all this work on my inner self, I started to recognize that the worth is in my flaws. Mm -hmm. The worth, my worth comes from the things that I tried and I wasn't successful at. Except I had messages from earlier days that led me to believe that failure was not a positive thing. Yeah, right. Right? And so I had to embrace new beliefs. And as I started to create those new beliefs about myself, my authenticity started to grow as well. And I started to shed the feeling that others were judging me. Okay. And I started to shed that feeling that others are not going to hear my message. Actually, I think that if I am more of myself mm -hmm. and if I make more mistakes and I show my struggles, that that is how people are going to be able to connect to me. Yes and see you as a human and see you as non-threatening right and that you're not going to cut them down if right. they share something um that they don't feel is quite right with themselves or whatever 
I love it. I've, I've even said, like, I don't even trust someone who doesn't swear. Because at the end of the day, if you stub your toe, something's going to come out of your mouth. Most likely it's a swear word. And so people who, I don't mind if someone, you know, has a discipline that, and they're choosing not to. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about false, you know, kind of sense of pride, like, oh, uh, swear. Uh, okay, then I just, there's just something about that. And I, I know that, like, um, I, one of my coaches, you know, I didn't expect her to swear, but she did. And then it was like, she had me, I hired her, you know, it's like, there it is, you know, that authentic little swear word, she's capable of it. I find that when people are doing releases, emotional releases, unless they get into a little bit of swearing, um, they don't do as well in the emotional release it it's really interesting or even tap into their anger and express their anger not move around and slam and hit things but just mm -hmm. like rah 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 you know and get it out because it isn't who we are right it's coming for yes from and, that and women side. in particular mm -hmm. yeah yeah and and why do we stuff it until one of our kids sets us off and then 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 the kid gets it right instead right. of just going by ourselves and chew ourselves out or chew somebody else out you don't have to do it to their face right and then just re release them with you know the forgiveness piece right and that you do love them mm -hmm. cool mm -hmm. beans okay so be yourself right so mm -hmm. like what what's one thing that you know like you might not be yourself around certain people but it really is who you are. And when you're with your friends, you're totally that way. Is there kind of a real extreme for you? Or what would you like to say about be yourself? Oh, just I felt a difference. Um, specifically, I've exited corporate now. Mm, right. So while I was in corporate, I would say that as much as I wanted to bring my authentic self to work, yeah. that in a corporate environment, they're still working on accepting authenticity yeah right and yeah. so i found is too especially while i was doing the transformation transformated transformation work right. and then going to a corporate environment and feeling kind of trapped in there where i can't really be my authentic self okay. i can't really express my opinions for the fear of whatever consequences there may be Sure. That is now that I've decided to leave corporate and step into running my own uh, business, right. those masks have been taken off now. Okay. And now I just show up exactly how I am mm -hmm. um, because I know that that is, that's my truth. Right. And when you stand and lead from your truth, mm -hmm. well, nothing else matters. No, and people feel it. They they can actually see um, who you really are via your. They're attracted to the the real you vibration. Otherwise, the other vibrations it's fake. And they, like that's not a vibration people can even be attracted to. It's kind of weird, you know. So yeah, and it didn't take you all that long to get your first client because you had stepped into authenticity, right? Even, um, even Linda, something that I did is when I created my first, well, when I created my first video, mm -hmm. I didn't wear makeup. Ah, uh, yeah. Right? And yep. actually, right after that, I decided, yeah, I'm not wearing makeup anymore. I just, that was just something I decided for myself. Mm -hmm. And the reasoning behind it was, if I'm going to be in this position where I want to turn on the camera and make a video yeah. different when I'm feeling it, when I'm yeah. in the moment, then I don't want to worry about that stuff. So I'm yep. just going to shed that stuff right now. <laughs> There's and actually an app that puts makeup on for you. <laughs> oh, is there? Well, maybe uh -huh. I need to do that. Maybe just do that. <laughs> right? Something That's awesome. About taking off my makeup to just lent itself to the authenticity absolutely and women actually really really appreciate that even men i had i talked to some guy who who thought that you know when his wife was you know super pregnant and puffy in her face and no makeup that was when she was like the most beautiful to him isn't mm -hmm. that fun also 
it really, especially for women, be, because we're conditioned to wear makeup, mm -hmm. there is a bit of letting go that has to happen there, right? Yeah. But what a sense of freedom when you do. Yeah, yeah. And if right? you want to get really authentic, <laughs> there's an experiment where where men were looking at pictures of their wives' vaginas. They were presented with them. And then the wives listened in to hear what they had to say because the wives were like, oh, you know, and oh, it's beautiful. And, you know, some of the men were tearing up and the women were just like, are you kidding me? Really? You know, like even that part of me is beautiful. Like you think that's beautiful because we're just, it's so, it's so trained out of us. Like, you know, right. that's a dirty place and don't look there. And, and yeah, interesting though. Right. All right. And I think part of my authenticity is wanting others to feel that they can be themselves as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. That, you're really good at that. And you do such a beautiful job of edifying others, which um, puts them in a, a safe space. And they kind of can relax and open up and be more authentic themselves. So mm -hmm. this is to you for that one. Okay. And then stand out, right? So that's how you do it. Get authentic and share who you really are. And then people can actually see you and, you know, even coach with you or buy from you or whatever hmm. it is. If you've got a coworker, um, they're going to be more committed to working with you, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, the standout piece took me a long time, Linda. I was actually operating from autopilot and I was trying to fit in yeah. and it brought me so much stress and mm -hmm. tension. And yeah. it was through this transformation that I finally have learned to be my authentic self and mm -hmm. stand in my own power and stand out. And it's not a negative. Right. I right. often viewed the standing out as a negative. Mm -hmm. And that you had to be um, not authentic, actually. You had to yeah. be loud and obnoxious and, and demanding. Oh, to, interesting. That was your, right? your image of standing out. Yeah. Right? Very yes. Cool. And for a woman to, you know, the labels that come in with that, when a mm -hmm. woman is passionate and her voice goes up, how mm -hmm. that's misconstrued for anger at times. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm a very passionate person. And, <laughs> and at times when I'm trying to be heard, heard right i i can just be loud and obnoxious and so i had to get comfortable with myself mm -hmm. and my own what i viewed as weaknesses mm -hmm. and cultivate an attitude of gratitude out of that and right. recognize that and we can also turn our weaknesses into our strengths mm -hmm. and so it's not about fitting into these pretty little boxes. Mm -hmm. It's about learning and, and develop, discovering your own self so that you can stand out amongst right. everyone else and, and not stand up. Yeah. blend in and play small. Yeah, absolutely. And that takes me to the word receive because like, uh, you know, in Australia, they have the tall poppy syndrome, right? So like if you can't receive a compliment without some joke, right? Yes. Um, so so if you don't joke about it and you say like, thank you, like oh, she has tall poppy syndrome, right? She's just trying to be better than the rest of us. And that's their idea, <laughs> or idea right. of stand out, right? And so receiving is so huge and as women, uh, that's, you know, we're, we're, everybody else is on the receiving end of our gifts and our help and whatever. So mm -hmm. that's another switch is receive. And mm -hmm. I just find that really fascinating mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So very cool. Yeah, I'm not so afraid to stand out now. I actually yeah. see it as a strength now. Yeah, you. Yes. I know for me, I just, I was really uncomfortable being on camera. And so to me, that was kind of maybe part of the stand out 
So yeah, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing, Jennifer. Oh, you're welcome, Linda. It's been my pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.